<laughs> this is Brett Ryan, also known as Bloods OT Clown, and you are listening to the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. <laughs> Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meet Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. With me, as always, my co host, Donnie Hoover, in his car right now. Yeah, I'm uh, out at the training center tonight. I say, you got me on an off night. I'm not down in the studio with Pennywise. <laughs> and joining us on this episode is a good friend of mine. He's worked with me in mall and other places. I am, of course, talking about Brett Ryan, also known as Blood So T Clown. Brett, my friend, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure, you know. The, you're a wrestling fan. You love horror. So here we are at Wrestle Horror, right? Guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let, let's go back to the beginning, Brett. Um, let's talk about how Bloodso came to be. Well, um, when I first started working uh, on, so this, this, this part goes back to 1994. Uh, at, at that time, just as a horror fan, Big, you know, Jason Voorhees fan. It's like, that's the role I want to do. That's the role I want to do. Ah, you're not quite the, the right size for that. Not quite the right build for that. All right, fine. All right, well, maybe this. Eh, I need to be just a tad taller for that. And then the first time I'd ever seen any kind of a, you know, crazy psycho clown scene was actually at this place. And oddly enough, when I first saw it, it was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. There's nothing even remotely scary about this. And then I got a chance to see it in action see some of the people will come through and <clears throat> it's like all right i think given the opportunity i can make something out of this so skip ahead a couple of years that opportunity did present itself and so i kind of ripped off blatantly ripped off uh two of my rock idols uh alice cooper and kiss with some of the makeup and blood and such and uh the rest as they say is history <laughs> you know um i didn't see you in the beginning but uh I do remember our time at, at the Denton Schoolhouse and definitely with Maul. Uh, and, and, you know, I've always been one, I think, uh, and don't take this the wrong way, but I think clowns have been overdone. They have. They really have. <laughs> but, however, you are unique in yourself in the way you present your clown because it's not the typical punk clown. You've got a niche that transcends that and I say that in the truest sense of the form because you're downright damn scary. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I was mentioning to Donnie that time we were at Indy Screen Park and uh, you put that girl in the hospital. Yep. <laughs> Crowning achievement oh, that night. <laughs> sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> I'm sure she's sorry she was there. <laughs> And the beauty of it is you did not lay a finger on her. Nope. <laughs> right place, right time. <laughs> exactly. You know, she was all full of herself, turned around, and you were there. <laughs> <laughs> Fell like a ton of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> the thing was, I had to keep pushing you back. Right away. Go away. <laughs> Well, that's the thing with a lot of us. Once we, uh, we're, we're like sharks. Once yeah. we realize we've got something wounded, now we're going to circle and try and come in for the kill. <laughs> Blood in the water, man. Blood in the water. I mean, I would have been, been happy to let you keep going <laughs> if the paramedics weren't there with a stretcher. All right. It might be frowned upon now. We should probably stop. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, for those of you that are watching this video right now, if I move over some, you can see a picture of Brett here that is a professional photo shoot we did in Columbus a few years back. And I can't say enough about how scary this man is. Uh, as a clown, I mean, uh, he commits 100% of 
150% of the character. I've never seen you break character at all when you're in that makeup. Once it's on, it's on. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> just, I think that's the way a lot of us were kind of uh, conditioned, I guess, when we started out as actors with our own, you know, creating our own characters and finding our own, you know, voices, so to speak. They kind of had us that under, under no circumstances do you break character because even in cases where there's an emergency, you can follow protocol and do the right things and, and you know, help people and such while still technically staying in character. So. <laughs> Uh, Donnie, do you have any questions for Brett? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I, we haven't really touched on like different differentiating characters and and types of characters. Um, so, as a clown, well, in your opinion, and and with your character, what do you incorporate and use that you that works for you that makes your clown so scary? Um, that's a very fantastic question. Uh, a lot of it has to do for me at least, is the approach has been, especially once we got into a position where we could do a lot of the cue line acting and, uh, you know, being able to have people kind of see us, you know, from a distance and come closer, it's, I don't know if it necessarily speaks anything about the character itself other than how that character is played, it is when you kind of scope and you see that people are, they keep double checking to see where you are, <laughs> okay, and kind of hone in, and you can play with that a little bit. So there's a lot of really humor involved with it because you're kind of toying with them. So while you're scaring the daylights out of these people, the people around it are laughing hysterically because <laughs> they realize what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it's it's borrowing elements from a lot of the things that I've grown up to enjoy. Um, like I said, the, the hard rock stuff, Alice Cooper, etc. Who I've you know it's certainly inspired the look. Um, and the attitude is more of a, almost take kind of a sick stand-up comic slash kind of, you know, a carnival parker approach to it. And mm. uh, so I don't know if any, <laughs> I'm starting to ramp on if any of this is answering your question at all. <laughs> but, uh, there's a whole lot of different elements. And a lot of it is also situational, like in the queue lines, you can do a certain thing. Whereas if you're in a stationary position, a stationary scene, well, now it's trying to find that way to kind of, you know, blend into your environment, the, the, the element of surprise, you know, catch them where they least expect you to do. So mm -hmm. it's, it's nice to be able to, uh, I guess, adapt, you know, uh, when playing that role to adapt it to fit all sorts of different, you know, situations. So. Right. Now, do you think that people take a, like get more afraid of, your antics and your character and what you say and do or the actual makeup with the bloody mouth or whatever. And I think it's the makeup and, and the bloody mouth and especially when I have the contacts in too, but I think it's this is just the look more over mm -hmm. than anything because half the time I don't even, I don't even have to say a word. I All right. <laughs> be close enough to where they can see me and just grin at them and they lose their stuff. So they just freak out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nice. Well, you know, I've got to say, um, yeah, Brett was mentioning how people, he, if he targets one person, the other people around are laughing. And I've actually got video of this from a couple of years ago, two, three years ago. I put a GoPro on him. Yep. And, oh, nice. and he was going through the queue line for one of the outdoor attractions at Indy Screen Park. And he, he targeted this one guy, and this one guy didn't want, didn't want anything to do with him. <laughs> and he was dogging him left and right through this queue line, and it's all from his perspective. <laughs> you know, it was on. It was a shoulder mount, and it, it's all Brett's perspective of what's going on here. And and it's just hilarious. This guy did not want anything to do with you. Nice. <laughs> and you could hear the crowd around just laughing their asses off. <laughs> and, and you know it's gold and i've got that video someplace i'm gonna have to dig it up again that was a good night <laughs> <laughs> it <was. laughs> uh, it, you know it's it's so much fun especially with the queue line work uh, you know brett and i have done queue line work for years now and uh, it's one thing to work in the house but you're kind of pigeonholed into a certain routine 
uh, and there's not really a lot of room for improvisation. Where the queue line, you've got this big playground where you can do whatever you want, basically within um, obviously within guidelines. But yeah, yeah, that's that's the way to go. I mean, that's what scares people. I mean, instead of being seen for three to five seconds at the max, you can be in somebody's face for half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Brett, uh, I know that you've, you, you've had a storied history and uh, where exactly did you start haunting? I uh, started out, <clears throat> excuse me, at Forest Fair Mall back when that was the, uh, the WEBN haunted house. Uh, it was on, I don't, I don't remember which department store it ever took, but it was uh, on the lower level. And uh, I was there from 94 to 95. And then uh, 96 was a year off for me. They were, they were done there. And they'd actually moved at that point to where the uh, schoolhouse is now. And uh, so 96 was off. And so I didn't work anywhere. And then um, at, also at the same time that they arrived there, uh, my aunt uh, by the name of Nightmare in Glenway had popped up and, uh, that's where I met a lot of the people that, uh, many of which I still associate with to this day. And uh, 1997 was where I started with them. And that is, of course, the year that the, uh, the character was born. They had this whole beautiful, beautiful maze that was illuminated by nothing more than a single red beacon light, slow moving. They said, here's what you are. This is where you can do your clown stuff. The makeup designs, the costume designs, that's all you. Go in, have fun. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> I, I wish it was. I wish it was still that way in some haunts, but uh, be that as it may. Um, when did you? When did you land at the Dent Schoolhouse? Um, that I didn't land with them until uh, 2006, which I believe was the year they took it over from the uh, Boy Scouts and such who used to run it. Um, prior to that, it was the. Nightmare on Glenway shut down and the same crew, the same, you know, owners, operators, et cetera, moved up to Mason, this old uh, dilapidated, you know, miniature golf course that the whole property was turned into an part indoor, part outdoor haunt. And that became, that was Nightmare Estates. And then once everything wrapped up with there and the one year we did the beach, 2005, much like 96, was there was a year where there was just nothing happening. And then once the word got out that they were taking that over there and wanted people in, uh, that's when I started with them. Uh, they, and at the time, similar case, they, they were at least at that point, I mean, aware of the character, the character was established. So they basically said, you know, here's where you're going to be, run wild, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, and, uh, you've had such a storied history and, uh, and like you said, you met a lot of people that you associate with today. Oh, yeah. uh, one person in particular is Dan Leopold. Yes. Uh, which uh, you're in a band with him, if I'm not mistaken. That is absolutely correct. Uh, West Side Rhythm Section. Uh, he's our, our harmonica slash uh, sound guy and uh, kind of gets us in the right direction uh, as far as song ideas and such. So he's uh, he plays a bunch of different roles in that. But yeah, that's finally off the ground after years and years and years of trying to get it rolling. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, I've watched you, uh, when, uh, you know, when I was at Dent's and then afterwards, after you had left and and then we acquired you with Maul, uh, you've done nothing short of impress me in the whole time I've known you. Thank you. Um, you've, uh, quite frankly, I'm embarrassed that you never got the belt, but you should have. <laughs> well, you know, it's... Oddly enough for me, because, you know, using the wrestling references, uh, two of my all-time favorites, uh, Ric Flair, which you all know, and above him was uh, uh, Roddy Piper. Right. And I think in trying to, and I think some of his snarky mannerisms, I probably piggybacked off a little bit in the act as well. But I think in a sense, in much the same way he never got that in, you know, WWF years ago, I think that that works out well. It worked out that way. Didn't get it, but it's probably for the best. It almost worked out better. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
you and I actually met Rick Flair together. Yes, we did. <laughs> nice. And to my in my studio here to my left is the picture that Rick Flair signed for me. Nice. And in my office downstairs, I've got the picture of you, me, Mikey, and Christian. Yep. Around yep. Rick Flair, which was just I mean, that was a bucket list thing for me. I don't know about you, but <laughs> it was, and that, that same picture of the four of us, well, I guess five of us kind of correct. Yeah. Uh, I have that up next to my, uh, my my desk for work, so yeah. <laughs> so let, let's shift. Uh, Donnie, you have any more questions before I shift the uh, road? Yeah, I was, I was just curious to know if Bloodsoe was the only character he had, or did you, did, do you have a different character? I had ideas for two other characters, um, one of which was kind of a I don't want to necessarily say it, it more or less an inmate of sorts, but had, you know, face was going to be scored up and burned. I had a, a couple of people chomping at the bit like, Oh, I have this great burn design. We're going to do it. And then that just kind of kept getting pushed back, pushed back. And then there was another one I had planned. that was going to be this kind of a, a basically demonically possessed creature, which I haven't given up on yet, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to need something once I retire the blood zone character, because boy, physically that's just getting harder and harder to pull off. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there are other ones, nothing finalized, but there are a couple of ones that I have that are been kind of developmental. Nice. And, and uh, every time we talk to somebody, we try to get a gold nugget out of them uh, for, to help other haunters out there. And uh, for like for haunters that want to do like a clown character that uh, don't know where to research and all that, what would be your suggestions on what they could research and and how they could learn to create their own clown character without being like a stereotypical clown. I definitely would say stay away from the movies, you know, stay away from the you know, things like it or whatever, because you're going to fall right into that, that same route that everyone's gone. I mean, I've seen so many people that seem like they're kind of a spinoff of either Pennywise or the Joker. So it's like, stay away from the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, design wise. I mean, I think what I mean certainly what I did was had kind of an idea in mind, designed that, and it's it's strange because it seems like when you borrow some of your other influences that you wouldn't even think have you know a thing to do with playing that kind of a character. Uh, but say for instance, it's just the type of music you're in, into. You can kind of take elements of that and work it into maybe your look, work it into some of your attitude. And as far as just the overall delivery, I would say. I mean, yeah, if you want to go for the boisterous, you know, laughing, your, your whole act is just you laughing, you know, maniacally, that's that's great, that's fine and well, but it also gets old fast. Um, so, yeah, you can do that, but try to try to kind of teach yourself how to read. Read what their body language is, read their, read their responses, and you, you can actually add so much depth to playing, you know, even just that, that clown character, because already... They're looking at you, and a lot of people just don't see what you're dressed up like. They're, they're already on that app. So <laughs> yeah, learn how to read them. Learn how to kind of get inside their head a little bit. If you can make that more of a mental thing than a jump scare thing, oh, my God, you, that's that is so much better than anything. <laughs> any, you know, jump scare that they're going to have in there, any pop-up, this, that, and the other. If they're walking away just feeling so ridiculously uneasy at how you make them feel, <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I would say definitely the key is try to just try to get a knack for kind of green people. Did 2020 take its toll on your fitness? Well, body slam the pandemic and get back in shape with WrestleFit. This innovative program combines all the fitness regiments you'll need to reach your goals. The WrestleFit workout will bring strength training, cardio, and the world of professional wrestling together in a fun, new, and exciting way. Have yourself a blast working out with dumbbells, kettlebells, slam balls, ropes, tires, and an 18-foot full-size wrestling ring. The WrestleFit workout isn't just for pro wrestlers. The WrestleFit workout is for everybody. At the NOW Training Center, you can pursue your fitness goals and learn how to train like a professional wrestler without all the bumps, bruises, and slams with the WrestleFit workout. Go to www.newohiowrestling.com slash training for more information or stop by the Now Training Center at 625 Eastgate Parkway, Blacklick, Ohio, 43004, Unit 6137. It was funny that you mentioned that about getting inside somebody's head because 
on our current episode, which is just aired today, uh, we talked to a woman down in Fayetteville, Arkansas, that runs Banshee Manor, uh, which if you haven't, you need to check it out, at least on Facebook or whatnot. It's a Scottish pond. Really? And everybody speaks with a Scotch accent. Nice. <laughs> but she was all about the mental game. Not the jump scare, the mental game. Exactly. Uh, so check that out. You know, you know look at that episode. actually aired today. So okay. check it out and, uh, and listen to Jonna because she's got some great ideas. Uh, but you, I was thinking about this and I was watching a, a show a few years back and there was a show that had clowns with chainsaws. Right. Now, you know, I'm the type of person I think chainsaws are overdone. Way overdone. But, but I bought a chainsaw for home not too long ago mm -hmm. that's battery powered. You don't have to, you don't have to sit there and go, damn, it's not going to start and scare the person. All I have to just pull the trigger and it's going. Nice. I mean, and just think about that. Bloods are wandering around with this chainsaw. All of a sudden, it fires up immediately every <laughs> time. <laughs> I have to take that in consideration for the uh, the final the final outing of within next year. <laughs> <laughs> Some food for thought. I mean, just because you don't have to struggle with the gas, the oil. That's true. <laughs> pull the trigger, man. <laughs> That's all you got. And it's just as strong as a gas-powered chainsaw. That's the thing. Right. <laughs> but uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're a fan, and we've discussed that earlier. Oh, yeah. uh, Roddy Piper, Ric Flair. What got you started in pro wrestling? What, dra what dragged you into the spectacle that sports entertainment is? Well, it, I think it started off kind of as a, uh, just a, it was actually a, a bonding thing for me and my grandfather. Saturday nights when I would be staying over there, that, the, the late, you know, all pro wrestling was like, that was the thing. And I got introduced to it through him. And of course, you know, when you're a kid, you think this, oh my God, this is all real. This is amazing. You know? So, <laughs> and I, he, which I, I think I've kind of, that might be why I took a liking to folks like Flair and Piper. He always had an act for uh, for the bad guys, you know. The the, the villains always just the, the heels always seem to have just much more much more character, you know. In a lot in a lot of cases, so following that, I was like, you know what? I I think he's onto something here. I kind of like them too. So, <laughs> but it was the I, and it was a lot of that the the uh, the characters themselves. They made it so interesting. They, you know, they they made you want to watch it. They made you not want to miss it. They, and I love what they can get so people so riled up. It's like, I can't wait to see this guy just get the hell beat out of him. So, <laughs> it roped you in and made you invested. And I love that then. And uh, that's when, when I see it happen, you know, see it more with the indie stuff for sure. When they're able to do that still, it's like, see, this is what made me love this. This is what I always found enjoyable about it. So when people still get that, they still do that. It's just awesome. So, mm -hmm. and the veil of kayfabe was kind of cracked open. Right. Um, did that change the way you looked at, at pro wrestling? Not really. I still enjoyed it. I mean, at the end of the day, you had guys that were still just, you know, spectacular athletes. I mean, you can't dispute that. So I could still certainly appreciate it. And I, even though you knew that, okay, this guy's not really, you know, this major jerk in real life or this guy's uh, not really a dead man, you know, but it's what they still applied to it, what they still put in to making that character. Uh, even though the general public, you know, they, they knew what the scoop was. It's still something to appreciate. And again, you can't, you can't dispute some of the, not only the athleticism, but some of the just hell these people put their bodies through for the purposes of, you know, for, for love of what they do for the entertainment back. And, and a lot of them, they just, man, they, they gave it everything. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. They and definitely still do. do. <laughs> and Donnie gave it his everything when he was a pro wrestler. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
That's why my <laughs> career is so short. <laughs> <laughs> I did all the stupid stuff. <laughs> oh. Put some mileage on there, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because, yeah, you know, you've been to FGW. Yep. Uh, and uh, Chris still gets indignant when something doesn't go the way she wants it to. <laughs> and I just looked at her and said, that's the way it's supposed to be. Right. But, you know, she'll tell her that. Just let her enjoy the moment. Right. <laughs> or let her be pissed at the moment. I like seeing her pissed off. <laughs> it's pissed. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, honey, that's the way it was written. I don't care. It's <laughs> supposed to happen this way. <laughs> uh, we watched uh, just this past week, and they had the first FGW show that was full capacity. Nice. And um, Cody Hawk lost the FGW title to the Guiding Light, Matthew Taylor, in a hell of a match that ran a good 30, 45 minutes. Nice. Uh, and they, I mean, they beat the hell out of each other. And it was worth, I mean, the admission price for just that match was worth it. But you know, she's like, well, Cody lost. And I said, that's what this game was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> but she still wasn't happy about it. <laughs> and I appreciate the fact that she still, you know, Buys into all that. And I, and I love why I know the inner workings of wrestling now, thanks to Donnie and things like that. I don't care. I still love watching the show. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I love the storytelling. Right. That's what you're supposed to do. You know, horror movies ain't real, but you still go in looking for a good scare and getting scared of the horror movie. Exactly. exactly. Same thing. Uh, and some of the stories these guys write are great. Especially. Mm -hmm. when Two wrestlers that are going, they're doing a, 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 they're doing a program that runs months, mm -hmm. and it finally culminates, and it's like either you like it or you don't like it, depending on who you're rooting for, but it's the story that's being told. Uh -huh. in the end. And I can't wait to see what kind of stories we're going to do at New Ohio Wrestling Center. Oh, yeah. We're going to come up with some good ones, that's for sure. Yeah. So being at the pandemic hit and we were off for almost two years, it's kind of like a fresh restart. We pretty much do whatever we want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, Brett, I don't know if you uh, – I know, Don, you mentioned it, but New Ohio Wrestling has a training center. Yeah. Up in uh, Black Lake, Ohio, which is out, just outside of Columbus. Okay. Um, got the ring set up, and uh, we're going to start doing shows on the 27th on Sundays, once a month. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Limited capacity right now, but well, is it 50, 50 tickets? Funny. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to do 50 for now to see how it is. I just saw Onyx walk by. <laughs> yeah. A large man that just walked outside your window. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I don't know if I can turn my screen around here. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, he's a pretty big feller. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad he's my buddy. I wouldn't want to mess with him. <laughs> no, I don't know that I want to be on his bad side. <laughs> right. So have you have you gotten Savannah any more interested in wrestling? A little. I know she's gone to a couple uh, uh shows when she's with her cousins and such. So she's taking a liking to it more. Okay. Um, I know we want to get out. We, I mean, I haven't been to her and I together. Rather, haven't been one since we were up at that, uh, up at the one where you made your uh, your ring announcer debut. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely want to get back out. It's uh, it seems, seems like every time it's like, oh, here's an opportunity. Like, a, I don't have her. B, we got somewhere else we have to be or something. But right. I definitely want to get back out. I love it. I love uh, you know because again, it was. Some of the stuff I've been seeing on TV, it's not really worth spending the time watching. Uh, other than you know, AEW, I'll give them some. Uh, you know, give I'll give them some love. They at least have done some things. They're like, all right, that's a little more akin to what I remember. But 
WWE. I've, I've washed my hands of them a long time ago. But and, so it's nice to see something, you know, fresh like that, like what we saw up there. So that's well, what I want to get to see. <laughs> Impact is doing some good stuff too. Are they? Okay. See, I haven't watched them in a while. They, they're, they're really up to game and they've got a partnership with AEW. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Kenny nice. Omega is actually the uh, Impact World Champion. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. And the AEW World Champion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, now that things are opened up again, I think things are going to get really interesting in the pro wrestling world because, you know, even the big companies have been running with limit zero to limited capacity. Mm -hmm. And now everything opening up, the crowds are going to be back. There's going to be more energy. There's going to be more, there's going to be more uh, intense matches because they've got somebody to, to work with. Well, There's something to play off of, right? Uh -huh. Right, yeah, as opposed to piped-in sounds. Right. You know? And, you know, that energy is going to be infectious to the Rattlers. So it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be really fun, and wrestling is just going to explode now that things have opened up, I think. It's going to be a new renaissance to, to a degree. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> That's real good. Especially after WWE screwed up and released the wrong people. <laughs> well, their their loss will be other uh, other uh, organizations' as gains. So exactly, they, they, they can keep screwing up. That's good. But keep keep doing what keep doing what you're doing over there, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Brett, uh, Donnie, do you have any more questions for Brett before we give him the question? Oh, uh, no, we can get right into it. I'm saying I'm interested to see what he's uh, what he got, what he comes up with here. Okay. Yeah. So we asked this question to everybody we talked to. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. And the question is, you are the main serial killer in your own horror film. What is your go to kill? Oh, wow. Go to kill in my own horror film. Probably tearing their throat out with my teeth. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. Kind of fits the, the bloody motif of my character, I think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, we've asked this question of a lot of people, and no one's ever given us a duplicate answer. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> still good. on the street. <laughs> In the high 90s, and there's never been a duplicate answer. <laughs> That's well, impressive. Well, we didn't start asking the question until about halfway through. It was like 50 or right. like 50 That's, episodes in, and then we started, but still, it's like it's still pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> it, it makes you makes you think about how some of these people actually think. All right. Yeah, well, that's also the, true. <laughs> yeah, Jonna, when we asked her, she said she would hit them in the head with a frying pan and then take their brains out and fry them up and eat them. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a new one. <laughs> right. Not just a frying pan, a cast iron skillet. Or, yeah, a cast iron skillet, right. <laughs> He's got nice yeah. and specific with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was all right with the frying pan or the cast iron skillet, which is all about cooking them up and eat them like Miss Kale and Duck Dynasty. Then I was just like, wow. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> and uh, have you seen the movie Terrifier, Brett? I have not. You need to. Okay. Um, we had um, the main killer in that one on our show. His name is David Howard Thornton. He plays Art the Clown. Oh, okay. And there is a very unique kill scene towards the end. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Uh -huh. You got to watch it. But well, it has my curiosity. <laughs> when you see it, you will understand. Okay. It's called Terrifier. Terrifier. Mm -hmm. Terrifier. Yep. Terrifier Two comes out in October, I think it is. Yeah, part of the clown. And, uh, it's it's supposed to be even gorier and better than the first one, from what I'm hearing. Nice. <laughs> definitely watch it. He's a clown, for starters. Definitely in my wheelhouse. 
<laughs> uh, and it might even give you some ideas. All right. That's true. I'm trying to go out with a, a pretty solid bang next year. So I'm uh, trying to load up on some new, uh, new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any, is you have any social media where people can find out more about you or about Bledsoe out there? Um, I know I still have the uh, Bloods of the Clown Facebook page, um, which is so <laughs> hasn't been updated in quite some time. But I know there's a little, should be at least a little bit on the history out there and a whole you know, slathering of pictures from over the years, uh, many of which when I was a, a much much skinnier lad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it. as far as the character goes, I think that's about it. Okay. So. With that being said, Donnie, any last words? No, I just appreciate you coming on and talking with us and uh, giving us your insight on the clown version of haunting. <laughs> well, I'm happy to help, of course, and I certainly appreciate the invite. <laughs> I am Meat Hook Jim for Donnie Hoover and our special guest, Brett Ryan, Bloods OT Clown. Thank you for listening to the Wrestle Horror Podcast, and we will catch you on the cool. next episode. See you, guys. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets, facebook.com backslash WrestleHorror, Instagram at WrestleHorror, Twitter at WrestleHorror, on YouTube at the WrestleHorror channel. And you can also find us on our website, www.wrestlehorror.com.